everyone, it's me, the Shakta Oracle, but you're getting me in drag right now. So I'm King Zamir Al Usa, all right? And I'm gonna share with you how to create a Kali altar, but there's a lot that I need to share before I go into how to make the altar, okay? So please, please, please don't jump ahead on this one. I, I Sometimes I'm okay with you jumping ahead and getting to the facts, but this, I will say, stick with me, stay with me until we get to the end, okay? <sighs> Number one, you need an ancestor practice. So that means you need an ancestor altar, okay? Don't go anywhere into any practice, into any spirituality, into anything without being close to your ancestors, Okay, this is absolutely important if you're going to work with Kali and with most deities. But since I have been getting a lot of requests on how to worship Kali, how to start your Kali altar, I'm going to share this first. You need to get close with your ancestors. You need to know your dharma, your path, and you need to connect to your ancestors so they can walk you there. Okay, and they will walk you there by bringing the right people, places, situations, everything, and align them for you. Okay, Solo practitioner, that's fine. But when I say solo practitioner, I don't mean I'm alone in the world practicing in, in secret. I mean, I have community. I listen, I read, I connect, I find as much information as I can. And I try to practice as responsibly as I can. Number one, if you don't know, you're not going to get in trouble necessarily. You might deal with the consequences of using a practice you don't understand fully. And your guides will help you with that if you stay close with them. And yeah, like you don't, <laughs> once you know, you know though. You know, once you know, you're responsible. So I just want to put that out there. So you're watching this video, you're about to become responsible for how you use your practice and how you invoke Kali. I have a very personal relationship to Kali. As I shared in other videos, I'm Indo-Caribbean and I'm a Shakta and there is a very special connection I have with Kali. And I, I work with her, she works with me to keep me close to my roots and my lineage and my ancestors, okay? So she is an ancestor of mine, I'm going to say. But when you're not working within that lineage, you have to be really wise and careful and respectful, you know? Be respectful, be respectful, be respectful, okay? Um, know where your place is. And Kali might be mesmerizing, but there's a lot of other deities that work with that energy. You know, there are a lot of other practices. If you're a white person, for instance, and you want to get into pagan practices and learn about goddesses like Hecate and goddesses like Persephone. I mean, there are other deities out there. Um, there are a lot of other practices that you could tune into. But I understand Kali is powerful. And if she's coming in, she's coming in. You know, that's what it is. So um, get your ancestor altar in order. The way that that's going to look is you're going to need a white cloth and you're going to need a glass of water. You're going to need incense and you're going to need a little candle and you're only going to leave the candle on when you're talking to your ancestors don't leave it on all the time and don't leave it on when you're not home okay number one and i think that if you're not if you've never worked with your ancestors before and you never connected to your ancestors or let's say for instance you have some fear about connecting to your ancestors the way you set that intention in working with your ancestors for the first time is you say i'm ready to work with the ancestors who are here for my highest good and the highest good of the collective, okay? Because you want to bring in ancestors that are in alignment with, you know, what we're trying to do in the world today. And you want to bring in ancestors that will be comfortably fitted with your practice that aren't going to make you feel uncomfortable or, you know, bring in negative energy, okay? And you want to set that intention every day and you want to meditate. Meditation and prayer. Meditation and prayer. So we have ancestor altar, meditation prayer three those three things will help you throughout your spiritual journey no matter what so what is prayer really like prayer is every day you say to your deities like you know um please protect me please watch over me please watch over my loved ones you know please use me as an instrument of your will and your divine you know order and your divine mission like i'm here to be of service to you and in and then you ask for something and you ask for something within reason okay you ask for within reason like please protect my loved ones please protect my path my dharma my my mission please you know help me to you know get my basic needs met you know love connection water shelter um 
those things, right? Food, those things. And, um, you know, if you're having trouble with something and you really know that working on this thing within you is going to better you and help you be a better, you know, person, not better person in the world, but like, you know, help you contribute to society in a sense of selfless service, then go for it, ask for it, you know, especially at the beginning, you don't, you don't want to ask for too much. And you don't want to ask for outrageous stuff. And you don't want to ask for anything negative towards anybody. Okay, number one, do not ask for that. Because when that comes back for your ass, it's not cute. So next is and you don't want to dabble in magic yet. You don't want to like do all the spell work and whatever until you set up your three things, your ancestor altar, your prayer and your meditation. Now what is meditation? There are many forms of meditation. You can meditate in many, many ways. There are all these different lineages of meditation, Buddhist meditation, Hindu meditation, Tantric meditation, you know, Shakta meditation, Shaiva medita meditation, Japa meditation, you know, Kirtan meditation, like transcendental meditation. We can go on, 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 right? There's so much, uh, so much information on meditation, but for you, set a timer on your phone for five minutes and breathe just breathe and let the thoughts roll through let them pass like clouds you know and if you find that you're so overwhelmed and you're like i can't let them pass like clouds then you do another an alternate to that meditation if that one is not working for you and you've given it a good try for a month or whatever 21 days then you sit with your thoughts for five minutes you start with five minutes set a timer and as the thoughts come up you let them come up you see them you have another thought you let it come up you see it and you keep breathing keep breathing in and out in and out and you want your breath to be long so long and deep deep inhale and slow long exhales and you want them to be as much of the same length as possible do not be a perfectionist do not be a virgo on this okay do not be an earth sign on this just breathe as best as you can you'll get into rhythm okay and i'm saying that because i'm a virgo i have a lot of, i have an earth trying so it's happening um okay so now we have those major things ancestor altar prayer meditation and you're that's your practice when you have a practice of that and you can say that you have a practice of that and you're honest with yourself then you can set up your Kali altar because when Kali comes into us and this is for anyone who wants to work with Kali. That is, this is not for people who are of the lineage or your, you know, your ancestors work with Kali and you're like having a transmission and you're like, what do I do with this? I will speak about that too. So number one, you are, for, so this is for people who are not of the lineage, who are not of the practice, who have no affiliation with Kali whatsoever by birthright or spiritual inheritance or anything like that or any teachings that have been transmitted to you by a guru. This is just, you're, you're just into it, you know? So what you do is you get an image of Kali, okay? You get a red, purple, or black candle and Red is for like her fiery, intense, passionate energy, moving things, health, you know, um, good health and, and, and uh, like the fire, the fire, like the, you know, how to say it, like the power of her, her shuck, her deep shakti, right? Her most powerful self. The black candle is to get, um, to remove negative energy, to absorb negative energy. And that with that one, you'll need to do heavy other, other heavy practices. Okay, so I wouldn't say to start with a black candle unless you feel like you really need it because your environment is very negative. Then I'll share what to do with the black candle in a second. And then the other one was a purple candle. And that's like if you're working on your spiritual path and your psychic path. And this is the one I would say I would really go to for you if you're starting off is pick a purple candle. Pray on it. Kali, please help me to develop my spiritual growth. Help me to be a spiritual being connected into my spiritual path and my dharma, my path, my mission. And leave it at that, you know, or just offering her, you know, set up some flowers, red flowers, red roses or red flowers um and just offer them to her if you've never worked with kali before don't ask her for anything just don't just pay your respects until you see there's a feeling you'll get it intuitively that she's like okay ask me you know you can offer her fruit and when you offer her her fruit you do her mantra which is om krim kalike namaha and you chant it onto the fruit and then you eat the fruit after you did what prayed on your ancestor altar meditated and did what prayer right so after you do all those things and you do it towards your altar you light some incense okay you offer all these things to her and 
Also, she likes ringing a bell. So you get a little brass bell and ring that bell as hard as you can because she hears it and she likes it. Um, there's a lot of other things that you could put on the altar, but mainly that flower, you know, like uh, red flowers, uh, a candle, her image or her murti, which is her statue and um, incense. You know, you want to burn something like incense and never, never leave it burning in your house. Okay and fruit as an offering if you'd like to and um also if, if there's other deeper practices too uh like putting out lime and blessing the lime and then bathing with the lime water like squeezing lime and bathing yourself to release negative energy and I'll, I'll share that about the black candle um in a separate video but i'll share a little bit now about mantras okay so for mantra use i've done another video watch it watch the videos on mantras okay watch it so when mantras you don't chant it <laughs> if you don't know the mantra and you don't work with mantras don't chant it yet listen to mantras play them in your house there's like 10,000 videos okay put the video on while you're at your altar play the video in your home to get rid of negative energy if you're using a black candle play the kali mantra for like ones that put type in like 108 kali mantra right so you want it 108 times being said and you charge it direct the energy make the intention for that mantra to imbue that black candle when you light it do not put your negative energy in that do not ill wish like anybody you know i don't care how much that person's your enemy oh they did this this and this they did this to my mom it's like do not call kali to do justice right now okay do not call her it is not going to go well okay don't do it uh, be safe be wise you know trust me god sees all spirit sees all and there's a higher order that we don't understand trust that order trust that order because if things are going negative now and you want to call kali for that you're adding more trust okay you're just amplifying whatever energy is there because she's big energy you want to put big energy into something put it in something positive to push out the negative okay um yes and then another thing that you could put on your kali altar or your ancestor altar that's just a very simple simple if you're trying to keep it simple work it slow take your time a white candle a white candle for your ancestors a white candle for like ancestor is this the right deity to work with so you place the white candle on the on the altar you get to your ancestor altar and then your kali altar and then you bridge them and you're like is this the right practice for me and then you wait and you don't ask for anything else and you don't do anything else because the messages will come through time and space okay through your dreams through a reading through another person by accident through watching a movie through a book through an assignment you get at school at a new job mission that you get whatever it's gonna come through don't worry but you have to be patient and you have to take your time hopefully this was helpful for those of you who have been asking like how do i start a, a kali altar um and now for people who already have the divine inheritance your south asian diaspora your indo-caribbean your west indian your caribbean you're of the african diaspora you're a person of color and you're like who are my ancestors you know um and we are just feeling the transmission right so kali has come to you whether in your dreams or through another person or you've gone and gotten a reading and the reading was like kali's with you kali's on your crown kali's in your body kali is your shakti badra kali is your shakti kalarachi durga is your shakti and you're like what do i do now pray meditate get your ancestor altar in order <laughs> and also you're going to be dealing with a lot of physical stuff okay i'm also going to make a separate video for this too but for right now just to start on a simple level so that you have something to work with set up her image set up an offering for her and pray to her to come to you in your dreams and tell you what she wants okay pray for her to give you a, a sign on where to turn to get this information because she may have a mission for you she may have something that you want to do she may be here to help you with something like get out of a really toxic situation or you maybe you're stuck in an addictive pattern um with a substance or a person or a situation uh you know you could be having a really hard time or you could have like negative energy on you that you cannot deal with and it's just hurting your physical body or your emotional or subtle bodies and she's here to help you or you've been 
long overdue on getting a spiritual practice and she's like come on 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 you know kali does heavy lifting kali is here when we've waited too long so she may be helping you with things that are really big get in touch okay get in touch with her and she will tell you directly or um, also get a reading you know get a reading um for anyone who is interested in that i do readings you can and i do spirit wi-fi readings is what i call them basically what that means is that we sit together and through one session sometimes one to three sessions depending on where you are in your spiritual journey we find out who your guides are and how to connect to them and how to create a steady connection that you do without me you know or without a, um, a healer but that you can have on your own in your own practice in your own privacy of your own home um yeah thank you so much for tuning in this is king zamir al-usa for you Mwah. love you <laughs>